Hey guys, welcome back to Creative Restorations. My name is Doug Giles, as always. Let's see, today's video is going to be the first in a series of videos about equipment that you need for doing pool tables. Okay, so it's actually, it's the most important part of making sure that any pool table is correct. And we're going to start off with this, levels. Okay, I actually, I carry three different levels with me when I go, anytime I go to do a pool table. Start off with this one. This is a two-foot Stanley. It's an I-beam level, which typically I'm not all that fond of. I can't really stand I-beam levels, but this one's actually a fairly decent one. It's actually extremely rigid. Um, this is a Stanley, I think they call it the Fat Max or something like that. And this one's probably three or four years old, and it's getting time to replace it. Um, give it to a carpenter friend or something like that, because although, uh, you know, they, they do tend to go out of level, um, you know, but this particular one is this one and the next level I go to show you, they're both about three or four years old and time to replace them. And I replace them about every three to four years. Now this is a two foot level, it's an I-beam level, and this one's actually pretty stout. As you can see, the, the aluminum on here is roughly about an eighth of an inch thick. And like I said, it doesn't twist. Most I-beam levels are gonna be extremely flimsy and they will twist. If you grab them by each end and you go to twist it like that, they'll twist. This one doesn't seem to do that. Um, however, when I do go to replace it, I will end up replacing it with something more on the lines of this. Now, this is a box level. The whole thing is boxed in. Uh, now, it's hollow on the inside, but the whole thing is, is actually boxed aluminum. And again, same thing. This is a four-foot level, and this one is extremely sturdy as well. No flex, zero flex whatsoever. That last one, the or that first one that I showed you is a Stanley. Like I said, I think they call it a Fat Max. It's that this one, this one runs roughly about twenty five dollars or so at Home Depot, um, and then this one will hit you up a little bit more. This one's an Empire. Uh, I don't remember exactly right off the top of my head what I paid for it. If I'm not mistaken, it was somewhere in the neighborhood of sixty seventy dollars for this this level, which again is not unheard of for a really good level, but it is getting time to get to replace it. Um, you know, now my, uh, my carpenters levels, which are these, um, these, these levels here, I'm not using these levels for really, uh, precision work. That's not what these are intended for. And that's not what I use them for. What I use these for, well, the two foot level, I'm actually using this one to level the table from side to side. You know, I don't bother using a four foot level from side to side, but I do use the four foot level from front to back, from head to toe of the table. Since that's the length, that's the longest, I use a four foot level for that. Now, that's just to level the frame of the table. I only use, that's all I ever use these levels for is to level the frame of the table. Well, when it comes to leveling the individual slates, that's when I break out the big guns. And that's gonna be what's in here. Give me just a moment, I'll show you what's in here. I keep it wrapped up in a couple of real nice, uh, Crown Royal bags and as you can see from the inside of the case the inside of the case is actually foam lined and everything so you know this case I use this one it's a modified gun case and uh, I use it because I really want to protect this level now this level is a Starrett, Starrett, S-T-A-R-R-E-T-T. -T. And the model of this one is the 9812. Uh, what the 98 stands for, I have no idea, but the 12 means that it's 12 inches from tip to tip, okay? 
And the way that we use this, uh, you know, as you can see, there's nothing here, right? Well, that's because there's a, it's actually a stainless steel cover and you rotate this and there's your level. And that cover is meant to protect this vial of liquid that your bubble is in. Now, on this level, this is the level I use to fine tune my slates. When I put all three slates down, this is the level that I'm going to use. And, uh, you know, somebody actually commented on uh, one of my videos was asking about this level. And he was asking how accurate it is because Starrett actually sells this level, the 9812. And they also sell one that's quite a bit more accurate, about 10 times more accurate than this one. And uh, the accuracy, and I'll show you on here. Let's, uh, can you see the graduations on here? You see those lines? Well, the distance between those lines, if your bubble, if the edge of the bubble is at, say, that long line right there, the distance between that long line and the next line over is about an eighth of an inch. And if the bubble moves that eighth of an inch between the two, that equates to about, well, it equates to exactly five thousandths of an inch. So if you broke up an inch into a thousand pieces, that would equate to one or five of those little segments. Now, that's this level. This level is, again, each one of those, the distance between graduations is five thousandths of an inch over this one foot span, okay? Now, does that mean that this level gets, uh, will get the table level to within five thousandths of an inch? Actually, no, it will get it much more precise than just five thousandths of an inch. Like I said, those graduations are about an eighth of an inch apart. And as that bubble gets, you know, the bubble's gonna be pretty much stationary as you're raising it up and it's only gonna move up in slight, slight increments. And if you've got the exact same amount of distance on both sides with your bubble, where the bubble ends on both sides, if it's, if it's the exact same amount from the center, then you're actually going to get it to roughly within one one thousandth of an inch. Now, like I said, Starrett makes another version of this level, okay, that's much more accurate and it will get all the way to five ten thousandths of an inch. So why don't I use the much more accurate one? Well, you get to a point of diminishing returns. And, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of areas where, where, you know, you get to that point of, of if you go any further, you're not really going to see an appreciable difference. And this is one of them. One one thousandth of an inch over a one foot span equates to roughly eight thousandths of an inch over an eight foot span. Well, your ball's not going to drift. You know, when you're, when you're taking that dead on shot, your ball is not going to drift over an eight foot span. It's not going to drift a noticeable amount at all over an eight foot span if it's only out by eight thousandths of an inch. Again, chop up that inch into a thousand pieces and take eight of those pieces. That's how little we're talking about here. Again, over an eight foot span, we're not talking about much. So this level, now I told you, you know, this level here will set you back about $25 at Home Depot. One like this will probably set you back about $75. This one will set you back about $225. And I have not looked at the price of the more accurate one. Uh, but if I'm not mistaken, I think I did look it up one time and it was closer to $400. And again, 
it's not worth the extra money for the little bit of gain that you're going to get. And that little bit of gain is not going to be an appreciable gain. All right, so let's get into the how to level your pool table portion of this video. And as you can see, you know, we do a fair amount of pool tables. But I promise you, by the end of this video, you'll know how to level your pool table. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off by checking our levels from front to back and side to side. And we use our four foot level for the head to the toe and we use our two foot level from side to side. So as you can see, I'm pointing out to David which ends, you know, which side needs to come up, which side is low, which side is high. And like I said, we're going to what we're aiming for is for it to be nice and straight and level, but it's rare that that happens. So usually I'll start off with the length of the table and I'll have David get underneath there and start putting some material underneath. And I use the Home Depot floor samples to level out the frame of the table. And this is once you've got the legs of the table attached to the frame, go ahead and check everything and use the, home, use the uh, floor samples from Home Depot. We'll do the front to back or head to toe first, and then we'll go ahead and do side to side. Now, this is a rough end level. We're not trying to, this is not for precision at all. So we go front to back, side to side, check our levels, and when we're good, we go ahead and we commit the slates to it. And as you can see, David's pulling out my trusty machinist's level. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go from slate to slate and we're going to read our levels and we're going to find out which end of the table is going to be our highest point. So we take a reading on each one of the slates. And in this particular case, we've got a, a little bit of a belly in the, in the frame of the table. And as you can see, the outside slates towards the outside are high, but the opposite end of the table was our highest point. So we're shooting for all three slates to come out perfectly level, just like this. And it's not impossible to do. You know, sometimes you get lucky, but most of the time you end up with a jumbled mess like this. So if you look at this diagram, you can see the highest point of the table is on the left. So we start out by securing the highest point. We'll put our screws in on the end, and then we'll drive some wedges in and raise up the slate until our bubble reads just so slightly high. We want it ever so slightly high, and then use the screws to pull it down in to level. So we're going to keep on going. And again, each one of those graduations on the level is five thousandths of an inch. So we're not really going up all that much. I know it looks like we're going up a lot, but we're really not going up very much. And as you can see, I get my bubble just ever so slightly high. Take my screw, drive it in, and I'm going to use the screw to pull that slate down to level. If you go a little bit too far, sometimes you can knock that wedge in just a little bit and bring it up the rest of the way. Because you do want the screw good and tight. And then you go over to the other side and you do the exact same thing. And you're gonna raise it up until, and just so happens I got it right on the first try. I'm, I'm a little high little bit high on the bubble. Knock it in just a little bit more because I know that that screw is going to pull that pull that bubble back. Pull the slate down and hence pull the bubble back over to the left. So there we go. We're 
got it right, right smack on it. And I'll go back in, I'll tweak that screw. And as you can see, I mean, it's just that ever so slight bit. So what we've done is we've leveled out from head to toe the first slate. Now what you want to do is you want to turn your level and go side to side. And we're going to bring up the side that is low. Now if you do that, if you do it in that order, your first slate will be perfectly level. Side to side and head to toe. Now when you go back in and you meet up your slates, you put your slates in, or you're, you're actually raising up that lower portion of the next slate. And again, you want it ever so slightly high. And we'll drop our screw in and bring it down. And we're gonna bring the slate back down to where it's just perfectly even with that first slate. If you get it perfectly even across that seam, since we've perfectly leveled the first slate, you should be good to go on side to side. And then the only thing that you really have to worry about is head to toe on, on each one of the uh, last two slates. So we'll drive the screw down. We're gonna feel with our finger to make sure that our seams are, the two slates are perfectly in line with each other. So we've brought up the middle slate to match that first slate. Do a little bit of fine tuning to make sure it's perfect across the two of them. And now it's time to put our level back on. And now we're going to bring up the opposite side. Or the opposite end, I should say. And sometimes it's a little difficult. I mean, those slates weigh a good bit and you're not really trying to yank up on them or anything. So sometimes it takes a little bit of finesse to get that slate just high enough to get the, the wedge underneath there without going too much. And again, we're going to do the exact same thing that we did with the first slate. We're going to continue to raise it until we're ever so slightly high. You know, I think my video skills or having David do the shooting, the shooting this portion of the video, I, I could almost just not talk here and you guys could, could see exactly how this is done. So again, you know, we'll finesse the screw to get that bubble exactly in the middle. And again, that's less than five one thousandths of an inch. I mean, just a sixteenth of a turn on that screw is enough to move that, that bubble over. So we're talking about very, very, very minute amounts that it's going to go up or down. So we'll switch over. We'll go over to the other side of the table and continue with the middle slate. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to bring it up. We're going to drive our wedge in until we're ever so slightly high on that middle slate now, on that opposite end of the middle slate. And then we'll drop our screw in and go ahead and screw it down. Now, once you've got that, again, it's a good idea to turn your level and make sure that you haven't, that nothing has gone out of whack side to side. But as you can see, we've got two of the slates now perfectly level. So let's go on to our third one. We're going to raise it up to match our second slate, our middle slate. We're going to raise it up just ever so slightly high and then take our screw and screw it down to where it's perfectly level. 
to where they're in line with each other. Drive the screw home. And we're going to feel to make sure that those slates are exactly in line with each other. And we'll go around, we'll do the opposite side. So we raise up the slate again, just ever so slightly high and use the screw to pull it down even. And use your finger to feel to make as soon as it as soon as it feels exactly even across there, you're good to go. Now we've got half of the last slate done. And then we'll move on to the end. And we're going to raise up the end with the wedge until again it reads just ever so slightly high. and use the screw to pull it down level. It went just a little bit far, so we're gonna drive the wedge in just a little bit more. Back off the screw, drive the wedge in a little bit more. have it should be one more there we go that's perfectly level we go over to the opposite side again exact same thing you know this isn't rocket science here pull the screw out of the way and we're gonna raise up that last little bit Use our screw. As you can see, the bubble is reading just a tad high, about five thousandths high. I'm going to use the screw to pull it back in that five thousandths and get it exactly between our main marks. Just like that. And now we have all three of our slates level. It's a good idea, again, to turn the level and get it to make sure that you haven't messed anything up side to side. All right, so there you have it. As you can see, it's pretty easy to level your pool table. Now this is exclusively for three piece slate tables that, you know, if you're pretty sure that the ball is drifting in all kinds of goofy ways, it's drifting different from one slate to the next, there's a real good chance you're gonna have to pull your rails off, pull your cloth off, you know, get the slate all the way, maybe even pull the slate off, make sure that any wedges or anything like that, that the last guy, maybe you did it the last time, maybe, the, you know, maybe you put the table together and you just did it wrong. Um, but you may very well have to go all the way back down to the frame, level the frame, put the slates on, level the slates. But again, it's not that difficult. Um, let's see, next video that I have planned is going to be uh, you saw the, the leveling of that table. Uh, next video is actually going to be the installation of that table, the whole move. We actually, we disassembled the table and that's actually a glue down type felt. Uh, if you noticed on that, on those slates, there were no frames around each one of the slates. So that is a glue down cloth. So this was a move where we you know, salvaged the existing cloth and glued it back down. A lot of technicians will tell you that you have to replace the cloth every single time that you move a table. Well, that's not true. Uh, a lot of technicians will tell you, oh, if it's a glue down, you can't reuse that cloth. Well, guess what? 
that's not true. Um, so in the next video, we're going to show you how to go about reusing a, the cloth for a glue down table. And I know I may, may have mentioned this before in the last video, but, uh, you know, I do have a Patreon account and I would very much appreciate if you guys would consider becoming a patron of this channel. Every dollar helps to provide this kind of content for you guys. So I will leave the link down below to number one, all of the tools are the levels that I showed you guys. And if you decide you want to, you know, you want to buy that $900, 900 and some odd dollar level, $950 level. If you want to buy it, I will leave the link to it down below, but I strongly suggest that you don't. It is completely unnecessary. However, you know, a good machinist level comes in handy for other things other than just your pool table. So if you need something, you know, truly level in your house or on your job or something like that, the Star at 9812 is an excellent level. So I'm going to leave links down below for the levels that I use or the levels that I recommend. Actually, maybe even the levels that I'm going to be moving over to once I get rid of the... the uh, carpenters levels that I use and I will leave a link down below to for you to you know become a patron of the channel so anyway we'll see you guys on the next video and thank you for watching